Merry Squidmas, everybody! Today we're going to be talking about walls. Yesterday we talked about painting the floor and optimizations for painting it more effectively, more efficiently. And somebody brought up that I hadn't talked about painting walls. I'd only talked about painting floors, which is a good point. And there's some movements that we want to talk about with walls that we really haven't gotten a chance to talk about too much, especially in Splatoon 3. So I'd like to go over that now. We'll start with the very basics, and then we'll go through all of the different options and some different tactics that you can use for navigating walls. So, this is a wall. Hi, wall. In Splatoon, we can paint walls, except on Brinewater for some reason. And if you paint the wall, you are able to go into squid form and swim up the wall. You can also, besides going in from ground level, you can jump into the wall. And as long as you're holding ZL, you will stick to it. And you can squid roll into the wall, like so. I highly recommend, by default, either jumping or squid rolling into the wall for a couple of reasons. For one thing, you don't need this patch of paint at your feet, your color, in order to be able to jump to that wall or squid roll to that wall. You do need this to be painted if you're going to just swim to the wall. So... If somebody's shooting at you in the meantime, it, they're more right, likely to disrupt what you're trying to do if you don't jump or squid roll into it. Another reason, which you might have been able to see there, is that squid rolling and jumping actually add their vertical momentum to the movement up the wall. It is faster to do that up the wall than it is to just swim to it, in which case you have to touch the bottom of the wall and swim all the way up from there. So jumping up or squid rolling up are going to give you that little burst of speed that will get you up the wall a little bit quicker. Another way to get up the wall quicker is by mashing the B button. Um, I'm going to uh, let go of the wall here to show you that by default you fall when you let go of the stick but hold ZL. But now I'm going to let go of the stick and then I'm going to mash the B button. So this is a little deceptive because the entire time that I'm doing that, I'm also falling. So I'm not going to go as far as I would if I hold forward and mash the B button. But here's the comparison between just swimming up and mashing the B button on my way up. Clearly much faster. Um, so definitely something that you should always be trying to do. A good combination of things for mounting the wall and then climbing the wall are to squid roll up and then mash the B button like that to continue moving up as fast as you possibly can. One other movement optimization that you can use to get the dismount up onto the top of the wall is called ledge canceling. So a ledge cancel is intended to get rid of this air time that I have, the hang time that I have as I come up over the top of the wall. So you can see that I'm up in the air in squid form and then I fall back down into the ink and then I can swim again. Um, and that part is slower, because if I can get down into this ink, I can swim, and swimming is way faster than falling through the air. So what I'm going to do instead of just letting myself go into the air is right at the top, I'm going to unsquid, let my momentum get me up over the top, and then I'm going to go into squid form again. And that's going to get me straight down into the ink with no upward momentum to take care of, and I'm going to be able to start swimming sooner, and that may means that I'm going to be swimming up over the top faster. Now, as you can see on that last little bobble there, this does take some practice, because if you let go too early, then you may just end up sticking back to the wall again and having to do this all over, and that is a huge loss of time. So something that is worth practicing is just maybe coming around to this block here. This is really good for trying it and get the, the walls and the top painted and practice ledge canceling up over the top over and over again until you get there faster. And then once you've got that down, you can notice that I am actually jumping into the wall from below to get myself up the side faster. So that's really good practice. Highly recommend doing that. The amount of time that you save by ledge canceling may look small if I were to show it to you on screen and, you know, the fraction of a second that you save. But in Splatoon, those fractions of seconds absolutely matter and will probably save your life if you're running away from someone and you manage to pull it off. So, 
Highly recommend learning all of these te techniques in combination. Jump into the wall, mash the B button up the wall, and then ledge cancel at the top of the wall. And that's how you're going to traverse these kinds of walls, especially on places like Flounder, as quickly as possible, and be as effective as possible because you're able to move yourself into position quicker and avoid getting splatted more often. Speaking of being splatted, one of the big disadvantages of being on a wall is that you can't turn your camera while you're there. I'm hitting the edge even though I'm using both the right and left stick inputs and the gyro. There's just no way of getting out of it until I drop off the wall and then I can do the full 360 motion. So if somebody comes up behind me, I have to detach from the wall in order to engage that player. And that's a problem because if I detach from the wall, I'm going to start falling and that's going to throw my aim off more. Um, so in Splatoon 2, the most disadvantageous position you could possibly be in was being on the side of a wall, because all you could do is drop off the wall, turn around, and try and shoot at them, and as you were falling, you're needing to determine what angle out of the 180 degree arc you have around you that player is in, and also how to aim up and down at them to hit them as you're falling. While all they have to worry about is, oh, I see them right there, I'm going to shoot there, now they can't go there, and now I just shoot down here because they're going to fall. And that's all they had to worry about was this one straight line that was really well telegraphed for them. Um, so that was a hugely disadvantageous position. And I love that in Splatoon 3 they've made it less disadvantageous by giving you the option to squid roll. It's still a disadvantageous position, don't get me wrong, it's still not perfect, but... This gives you some armor that will help you tank a few shots while you're turning around getting your aim on. And it's somewhat unpredictable where you're going to end up, because you can do this in multiple directions. You can do this straight out, you can do this with different timing, you can do this at different heights. So the fact that players can do this means that taking someone out off the wall isn't quite as much of a cakewalk as it used to be. One extra thing that you can do with those uh, squid rolls is you can wall jump. So I'm going to start by painting the wall here, and then I can go from one wall to another wall on the same corner and do that sort of thing to quickly get up from wall to wall to the top of the ledge. Um, if I, of course, execute it well, which I'm not doing, but there we go. That's a pretty good example of it. Now, the crazy thing is you don't need this wall to be painted. You just need to be really, really good at the game. Uh, and I don't think I'm going to get this, but what I'm seeing some top Japanese players do in their movement tutorials is they're jumping, painting a spot on the wall for themselves, and then painting another spot on the wall after they squid roll off and swimming into that, and then getting this wall jump off of just those two specks of paint that they put while they were airborne. Um, so it's extremely quick to see them do it and get up. I'm just not good enough at it to do it yet. Um, I've been trying to work on it, and I got it like once or twice in practice. But definitely not consistent enough for me to try using this, like I said, very hard. Still, very cool that it's possible, and that makes it so that the skill ceiling for this game is very high. And we're only going to see cooler and cooler things as our players get stronger at it. So... You've got to, you know, be shooting very early and be shooting as far downward as you possibly can for that ink to drip down low enough for you to drop into it. Um, I'm going to try and get it one more time, and then if I can't get it, I'm not going to worry about it. But you can see, you know, proof of concept, at least in that I'm able to get into this first spot as consistently as I am. One other important piece of wall movement is the squid surge. Um, the squid surge, you sit in the wall, press and hold the B button, and then you charge up, and when you release, you're going to hop up over the top. And you, there are two levels of charge. Um, so you just saw the second level, where I start glowing, you know, my eyes glow up. Um, and then I get moving very quickly. And then there is another level where you only charge once. And that entire time, I was not holding up on the joystick. That was just the squid roll. You can see at the top, it gives you that, that kind of glowing effect, which means that you have armor. So, regardless of which way you do it, you are going to have armor at the top. It's tricky in this game to distinguish between, you know, pressing the, the B button to mash and pressing it for too long and accidentally getting a, a tier 1 squid surge. Uh, so make sure that you're not holding on to the B button for too long if you're trying to mash B to swim up, 
because you might accidentally get the tier one squid surge and go a lot slower up than you would have if you were just mashing the B button. Um, yes, mashing B is actually faster than squid surging. Um, even, you know, the, the tier two squid surge, because you have to take so long to charge it, that extra burst of speed that you get does not even out the amount of time that it takes to charge it. So if you're just trying to go for speed, all you want to do is mash the B button and then ledge cancel at the top, like we've been talking about. Now, one really important mechanic of being on walls is the angle that you can see at. Because from here, it looks like we're in a fairly obvious position. It looks like this player should be able to see us. But we'll see that that's not the case if we actually get into that player's position and turn around. We can't even see the, the side of the wall. You're only going to be able to see the side of the wall by turning the third person camera around while being pretty close to the ledge. So from here, yes, we can see the wall. Um, and the player will stand out a little bit. You can see these splashes pretty well from that kind of an angle. And you'll be able to actually aim down at that and shoot at it if you're on the right side. If you're on the left side, it's going to be a lot harder because you're left side peeking. Um, players hold the weapon on the right side of their bodies. And so you don't have to be as far around the right side to be able to hit stuff as you do to be around the left side and hit stuff. So if you're trying to take someone off a wall, you want to be in this kind of a position, ideally. But let's say they can't get there in time, but they know you're about to come up they're most likely to be doing something like this, pre-firing it. And this is dangerous to somebody who's on the wall, because as soon as they get up, no matter how quick they are on the draw, they're already being hit before their gun comes out, and, you know, during the startup frames of their uh, shooting animation. They're very likely to lose that fight, as long as the opponent has their aim anywhere remotely near on. But if you squid surge that's something that can put you off that line that they're pre-firing at and potentially give you the advantage. Now, this is a very, very situational tactic because if you don't have your aim on by the time you're like most of the way down to the ground, they'll have had time to adjust and you're still in the air. Remember, being in the air is slower than being down on the ground level and swimming. That's why we ledge cancel. So if you put yourself up in the air, but then don't hit your shots and you're aiming all over the place, you're actually easier for them to hit. You're a larger target and it's going to take you a while before you're able to move out of the way. So they have some time to get their aim on. And a lot of the time, despite the fact that you get armor on the way up, squid surging actually puts you at a disadvantage. I don't recommend using squid surge most of the time. The only reason I would do it is if someone were trying to pre-fire me or... If I hadn't painted all the way up the wall, and I need to get the rest of the way up over unpainted turf. Because while I can do this and be quicker, I can't do that if it's not painted. Now you'll notice I am actually painting it a little bit. Um, if you haven't noticed, the squid, if they're in your color ink, will add a little bit of ink as they move. They'll spread a little bit of it. So I can make like a little bit of a trail here with those splashes that I make as I go back into the ink. That splash is actually a physical splash in the game that causes more ink to spawn. And you can take advantage of that because on the wall, you're always splashing. So you're going to be able to kind of work your way up if you just need the tiniest bit more. This one jump isn't going to get me all the way up over, but the second one will. There we go. That was it. Some ways that you can kind of squeak your way up over the top, even if you haven't painted it quite as effectively as you want to. But if you've got this much, squid surging is still going to be faster. Now, ideally, you just want the whole wall painted well the first time. So what you'll see with most weapons is they're going to aim near the top. And the reason for that is look at how the ink drips down. Um, that can actually be used to your advantage. So that if you put a spot of ink here, the drip is able to kind of fill the gap that would have been left otherwise. So I recommend starting from the top and moving down like this, and then jumping into the wall and working like that. Obviously different weapons paint in different ways. So let's start by talking about chargers. Uh, chargers tap shots are only going to do that, which is not enough, but a charger with any amount of charge whatsoever, just the tiniest amount will paint a full line every single time. Um, you'll get a slightly wider one if you charge it all the way up, but that's not a huge difference. You just want the smallest amount of charge and then you fire and then you're good and you're all the way up. 
Sloshers are generally not going to have too many problems because they just leave a big, consistent paint trail every time. So just aim near the top so that it goes high enough and the rest will be filled in for you from your feet all the way up the wall, at least as far as the weapon's range goes. Now, if you end up in a situation like that where you're trying to hit it from the air, then you might end up not actually cleaning it all the way down to the bottom. But from standing, should always work fine. Should always paint your feet, get you all the way up there that you need to go. And even from the air, you know, it's usually going to be pretty good unless you have to get really high up. Rollers do not do well at this with their horizontal flicks. That horizontal flick is going to go down pretty far, but it's not going to go down far enough for me to jump into it. So if you end up trying to use a horizontal flick, something like that, then you might want to try and connect with rolling and jumping at the wall, because this actually will paint the wall for you, just like an actual paint roll blur. Who would have thought? For some smaller walls, you could potentially get away with this sort of thing, but ideally what you're really trying to do here is use the vertical. Just aim the vertical at the top of it, and you should be able to get the way all the way up most sized walls, especially if you have a longer ranged roller. Blasters, it just kind of depends on uh, how much range you've got, how high you can go, but typically they'll put a dot on the wall of a certain size, and so the goal here is to put that dot positioned maybe top two-thirds or something on this wall so that it's high up enough that you're able to get all the way up by just hopping over the top, and the drip will go low enough that it lands on the ground here. And so if you position it in just about that spot, you're going to be able to get up most walls. Now, if we're on Flounder Heights, we might actually need to fire a second shot, um, depending on which wall we're trying to climb here. So be aware that that might be a problem. Bows. Uh, bows tend to paint pretty well horizontally from, you know, standing. But as you can see, that horizontal isn't going to be great for climbing up. You can kind of make it work. But generally... You want to be taking the jump shots, and that's usually going to be enough to scale most walls. So as you can see there, again, makes a pretty nice line, and we're able to hop up just out, out of the edge of that. Whereas the horizontal, the uh, standing shot, is going to work like that. In the same way, the splatanas, while they do give you kind of a nice dot there, that's not a very tall one, so that's not going to get you up most walls. That might be really good for a low one like this. That just paints all you need there. But if you're trying to get up a higher wall, vertical is definitely going to be the way to do it. Now, brushes don't have any other firing modes. They're kind of just going to need to aim high and get it painted enough that way. Bloblobber isn't actually going to be super quick. But one other option that you have is to use the sprinkler on it. And that might help you out in some situations. So maybe you fire one shot here, sprinkler here, and now you've got enough. The sprinkler alone isn't going to quite get you there, so you will need maybe a second shot or something like that. Or you could just fire two shots, and that would also be good for most walls. Umbrellas also, they're not going to have a really big blast radius when they hit, so you're probably going to need two shots, either two shots, or with this particular umbrella, you could use the sprinkler to help you get part of the way there. Explo, much like Blasters, is going to put a dot on the wall, but it's a very, very big dot. So, you usually don't have to worry. Explo's paint wall is very well. You can see it's just putting a ton out there. And there will be a point where it goes up too high and you need to fire a second shot, but that point is going to be fairly high up on the wall. You can see we're bumping our heads before we need a second slosh. The semi-autos, uh, the nozzle noses in particular, um, if you just aim and shoot at a single target, you're only going to get that little dot. But you can actually spread the shots out by aiming in different places. So if you aim at the top to start with and then do this, you get a lot more of a line, and that's actually swimmable. Um, so that's something that if you're playing one of those weapons, I would definitely practice so that I can get up walls quicker. That should do it for us. Have a merry Squidmas, 
and many, many very Booyah New Year's to come.